Those that people had got me. Oh my god, this is mental. I can't even get me this when it's like that. Welcome to a little bit different video today. I'm in the car, as you can see, I'm out and about. It's the weekend. I just thought I'd change it up. We will get back to the Black Lodge, I promise. That's where we're heading eventually. But for today, I thought we'd have a wee chat about something that's been getting on my mind. I think it's on everybody's mind at the moment, and that's the state of whiskey in 2024. Now, I don't know if anybody's seen it, but there is an excellent couple of articles on Dramface, which I'll put the headlines here. You can see. I think we're, we're kind of coming out of the, the madness that was the last maybe four years of whiskey. And whiskey's kind of changed in terms of what, what we see it as and how the marketplace sees it. Especially the whiskey market has changed how they see consumers. And I just wanted to have a wee chat about it because I think it's, it, it's, it's notable in how much that the people I'm speaking to are feeling a little bit, probably say fed up at the moment. There's not really a, a desire to go out and get new bottles or anything exciting on the horizon. And there's a number of factors in that and I think that's what I want to kind of talk about today. And I also want your feedback in the comments below. I'd love to hear your points of view on this. But how do you see the state of whiskey in 2024? People make predictions. Aquavita did his VPUB this week and he was making his 2024 predictions. Uh, a lot of them I agreed with. If you've not seen it, uh, go find it. Just search Aquavita VPUB. Um, and he kind of echoed a lot of what I was thinking, what other people were thinking. And I'm seeing a few comments from my whiskey group as well about people saying, is there anything to look forward to this year? Is there any hope for it? And I, I think we should maybe discuss that today. A wee bit different. Maybe a wee bit too serious, but it's the start of the year. Dry January's giving me a bit of clarity. Forgive me, drinkers. I have sinned. It has been... Oh, it's been like 17 days since my last drink. And I've made five videos. Number six coming up. So, correlation, maybe. So I let's get on the road. Let's have a chat about that. And I join me as a potter about doing some errands. So bottle prices, that's probably the biggest complaint at the moment. You've seen rises of 50%, 100%, 200% in some of the bottles, and you're not seeing the quality increase for that pricing. Now there are some suppliers out there that are trying their hardest to keep it low. Independent bottlers, Thompson Brothers, North Star, Adelphi, quality stock, but you are seeing like the likes of Kalila creeping up to £80 for an eight-year-old, a ten-year-old Kalila, and it's not really acceptable. Now I understand that everybody's got to try and make their margins, but what's driving that? Well, it's been the whiskey barrel investment, so then where's the, where's the joy in that anymore? So people are kind of cutting off their nose despite their face, chasing investment. That's putting a big downturn on people trying to enjoy the whiskey. Then with that level of pricing, you're prohibiting new people entering the market. And by that, I mean new drinkers. It's already expensive. People pay 20 quid for a bottle of any spirit and think that's expensive. So what are you meant to do when an entry level is 55 quid? It's just, it's, we're not helping ourselves as a... Well, I say it is. The whiskey industry is not helping introduce new people into the funnel. You've got to make the sausage. You've got to have the meat. You've got to push it down. No going to happen if the meat's 55 quid for entry. So if we're not bringing new people in because it's too expensive, i.e. people don't pay £25 for a bottle of whiskey in a supermarket unless they really want it, then... You inflate prices, you don't offer much value, people can't taste it before they buy it, majority of the time, so they're taking a risk. So explain to me how we get the new ones in, 
at that stage. Now, the drinkers, the people that have been buying it, you've increased prices significantly and you've marketed to people who aren't them. And then, you, then you're surprised when bottles go on shelves and just sit. Because they've moved on, they've left. They went somewhere else. Someone may be a little bit cheaper, maybe someone's paying more attention to them. Maybe somebody's talking to them and offering a product that works better for them. And who could blame them? Like, we've all done it. You're left in a position, and I'm, I'm thinking from a, a drinks brand point of view here, you're left in a position where you've went chasing a new audience to grow. You've inflated the price, you've done some fancy marketing, bottles are sitting on the shelf. Now the people that used to buy it, don't buy it either anymore. So rather than increasing your sales, you've pretty much shrunk your sales for a bigger outlay. So then what happens? Do you shelve the product? A lot of time you make it cheaper. You make the product cheaper. You don't lower the price, but then maybe you start lowering the prices and the prices go up and down constantly and you become known as a yo-yo brand. Well, why, why would I pay full whack if I know I could just wait and get it when it goes on sale or when you drop the price? So there's a lot, of, there's a lot in there to digest around price. Like, rather than get someone to buy two bottles a year and double your sales, you chase people who don't buy any bottles and then you sell zero bottles a year. So there's that element. Now there's cost of living, processes, glass, transportation, everything's affected price. We understand that, we get that. We're not saying that that's out of order, but what we don't appreciate is chasing the money. And there's quite a few brands out there that have done that and it's burnt them, it's burnt their reputation. There's other brands that have managed to keep it steady Eddie and combated it and tried have communicated why the price increases have happened and been very clear and the price increases have been 10% or 15% and that's fair that's absolutely fine we get that so I so prices at the state of whiskey price wise is we're halfway through January and we've already seen quite a lot of sales from retailers that you weren't seeing last year there's some Premium whiskies, 25 year olds and stuff, 30 year olds, they were flying and they were only in, in store only. That's another thing that really got me annoyed. You were happy to take the money for any and every bottle online during Covid. But now, no, it's in store. These are premium in store only bottles. Aye, thanks. Aye, that's great. I'm so glad that I supported a small independent business during Covid to then be told my money's no good online. Um, but I, I'm not naming any names at all in this video because that's not the point of it. It's a general look at it. Uh, but yeah, you're seeing these premium bottles sit, sit for days on end, and they're no, they're not going anywhere because people are fed up. Nobody wants them anymore. That balloon, that bubble has burst, thankfully. So I price. But let let let's keep going. We'll keep moving, and we'll come on to the next thing. So we've talked about price, but what annoys me is it's, it's the nature of the liquid we're getting at the moment. It's no, you're looking at cast strength bottlings, they're charging more for those. Like premium, premium prices now for that. You've got companies putting out brand new liquid for ridiculous money. There was a distillery a couple of weeks ago launched three years old one day liquid over 200 quid that's not for drinking that's speculative and to be honest now that the the, the investors have got their share they're talking about releasing normal price bottles nah you can keep them no interested I think there's plenty of good stories out there i think there's a lot of good whiskey i don't mind paying a premium when i know it's crafted well and it's a small batch and it is what it is Case in point being Daft Mill. Daft Mill 100 odd quid a bottle. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pay it for drinking it. It's amazing. Like, I really enjoy it. It's a small production. They know what they're doing. There's a demand for it. It is what it is, the cost, and the, we, we know, but it's not like they've inflated it. 
recent release has been a little bit more expensive, but it is what it is. But don't tell me these mass-produced ones are worth it. I just feel like they're taking advantage of our goodwill and it's running it. Why do you need the two? Can I have one? No. Bye, where were we? Quick change, quick change. Had to take the, the wee man out for a walk. All right, let's keep going. This way. So we've spoken about price quite a lot. We've spoken about the market and the element of it. We need to talk about the hoarders and the flippers. I think there's been a lot of people stung in the last six months, particularly. On a well-known whiskey forum that quite a lot of people in the industry are on as well. There's a few people hyping up these Suntory, I think it was Suntory 100 release. Or was it Nika? Suntory, I think. Whoever makes Yamazaki, off the top of my head, I can't remember. But Yamazaki 18, 100th edition. These are super limited. They're in Mizunara cast. Get them, get them. And people paid attention to this person for whatever reason. And then a few months later, as the prices plummeted from what they were buying them at, they came on and they were like, what should I do? I've got, should I invest more into these Hibiki ones? And you're kind of looking, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you, <laughs> why are you chasing this? Needless to say, the person that was advising them has disappeared. Silent, absolute radio silence from that person now. This is the problem when people put faith in other people. Don't, whiskey was never about immediate quick wins. I don't know the ins and outs. I'm four years into this of buying it and collecting it. If you want quick wins, go and gamble. That's the only thing I can say. Some good quality bottles will always continue and your investment will be safe. But it's the same as all those Instagram ads that you were seeing. Buy this cask. 40 years ago, this cask was 30 grand and now it sold for 2 million. 40 years ago, 30 grand would buy your house. But if you can hear, parakeets everywhere. You've now got a situation where a lot of people are holding a lot of bottles. They're either hoping that the market's going to pick up and they're going to get their money back or they're going to ditch them all and we, as fortunate drinkers, can sweep in and do it now. On that V-Pub that I mentioned earlier, Roy did mention he was trying to do something with the auction series of trying to pick up drinkers under RRP, but the auctions keep going up and down and that's true. That is true. At the moment, I think we all know from a drinking point of view, there's a lot of bargains to be had. But I also think a lot of people, speculators, are trying to buy their way out of the issues that they're in. So we need to keep an eye on that. The glass lock is very real. I'm sitting on a stupid amount of bottles to drink. So I, my buying has just tailed off. I don't, I'm not chasing anything. I don't need anything. Occasionally, like, someone asked me, they want to get me a gift. I said, get me an Ardbeg 10. Ardbeg 10, because I don't have it. And I figured, nice, good drinker. Something nice to have when it comes to it, but I'm not chasing. I bought two at auction last week, two blends, just, because they were cheap. They were really cheap. Did I need them? No. So I'm kind of, and if I'm feeling like that, and I've speak to people, a lot of other people are feeling the same way about like, why are we, what are we chasing? Why are we doing it? And that's going to be a problem. Now it's fine for us buying at auction, but what about the independent retailers? The ones that don't have big clout behind them? All well, these bottles are sitting gathering dust on the shelf. How are they going to encourage people to buy from them? As I said, some of them burnt their bridges when, oh, in-store only, that's fine. So they can't rely on that online trade anymore because other people have went elsewhere. A big retailer did quite a cynical, uh, I think it was 20% off everything. They inflated some of the prices, but still tried to get rid of a whole load of bottles. I've had emails today from stores, try to get rid of bottles. And if we're saying, oh, just buy at auction, buy your drinkers there, that's affecting them as well. So there's... There's a lot of parts to this machine that's faltering at the moment. So I'm just, that's my concern. My concern is there's no new people coming in. The existing drinkers are getting turned off by the brands. The price of everything is shooting through the roof. Distilleries are trying. There's new distilleries coming out of everybody's arse at the moment. You can't try them all. How are they, who are they picking up? Then you look abroad, 
Yes, India's a massive growth market. Indian whisky just overtook Scotch as the biggest seller in India, and their whisky's good. So we're losing out there. America, they've got their own whole own scene. Bourbon, American whisky, light whisky. I saw the whisky tribe are now basically calling the light whisky single grain, because that's what it is. So they're going after that. Plus, big affinity with Irish whisky over there. So you've got that factor. Irish whisky's struggling for some of the new startups. We won't name names, but there's a couple that are teetering on the brink. Uh, World whisky, some Swedish whisky looking ropey at the moment. Not, distillery no looking great. But everybody's making, making, making. And there's only so many of us buying. So where's it gonna go? I don't know. But that's my, my kind of view at the moment. Now positives, I'm still excited by whiskey. I'm off to Paris in a couple of weeks and I'm gonna be hitting up a couple of places. I was meant to go last year. My wife got COVID, so I'm really excited to go and do that. I'll be out there doing that and seeing, I'm gonna to get to visit Le Maison du Whiskey finally and have a wee look in there, no doubt pick something up. Then a couple of weeks after that, I'm off for the furthest drams on the run yet. We're hitting Kentucky. We're going to do Louisville. I think we might be able to swing by Cincinnati. We're going to do Nashville. I'm not there for a long time, but we're going to hit as many things as possible. Come with me on that. That should be exciting. Any recommendations or tips, please leave in the comments below. Again, would love any input. Or hit me up on Instagram, at Drinks Whiskey on there as well. Any DMs about good bars, good shops. I'm not going hunting beasts. Can I find big beasts in Louisville or anywhere like that? It's easier to get them here, to be honest. But at this stage, I'm still excited by whiskey. Bourbon American whiskeys excite me because it's something new and it doesn't feel as tainted to me as Scotch does. Now, hang on a second as this plane goes over. Hi, and we're back. So I, it doesn't feel as tainted and it feels a bit exciting and something to learn that I'm enjoying, I enjoy learning. So I want to do more of that. Hence why we're going out there. It's an early 40th present. There's a couple of us going. It'll be great fun. So please keep an eye out for that. What else am I excited for? I don't know, I'm excited just to see some other releases from places. Like I've got my favorites, everybody knows. They're quite common favorites these days. Ardner Merkin, love that stuff. Thompson Brothers Output, loving that. That's really where I'm buying from at the moment. Bit of tandu, but the price of that's it's kind of prohibitive at the moment for me to be picking that up. The stuff that I do want. Springbank, Gulkerin. We know what goes on with that. So it's, if I can get it, fantastic. At the moment, I've, I've got enough drinking Springbank, so I'm happy with that. What's, what's tickling your fancy this year? Like, is there anything that you're looking out for? Anything you're looking to learn? Any types of whiskies you want to learn more about? I think I'm going to try and get out to, I really want to get out to Ireland, down to Cork, and visit the Middleton distillery down there. Because I think that'd be interesting, something a wee bit different. I'm going to try and hit a couple of English distilleries this year, see that stuff. So from my point of view, my state of whiskey in 2024 is, it's not great, but it's no, it's no super doom and gloom, but I do think it needs addressed. And I think the Scot Scotch Whiskey Association or whatever they're called need to do something about it. I think drinks writers need to do about it. I read a thing in Whiskey Magazine, they didn't even mention it. Talked about cask finishes and stuff and this is what the year looks like. Guys, you need to excite us. Go ahead and get us back on board. Go ahead and get us hopeful. Makers, keep doing what you're doing and be transparent with it. And the whiskies that I keep going back to and my favorite ones and that, I can have conversations with these people and they tell you how it is. And they tell you the breakdown of the pricing and they explain, look, this is happening or that's happening. Thompson Brothers sent out an email, shipping costs have went up, explained why. Yep, that makes sense. They sent out an email a few months ago, blend prices are going up. This is why, absolutely, cool, understand why. That level of transparency is what we're asking for. Don't want to see the books. Don't want anything like that. So I, State of Whiskey 2024, it's just a bit sombre. I don't know if it's maybe just because it's January, everybody's a bit miserable after the festivities, but we need, 
If anything, we need whiskey to give back to the community. Just something, something, a bit of hope. Like even the whiskey show and stuff, the price to get a ticket now, it just keeps inflating and inflating. And they're charging exhibitors. So why are they, why are they not passing any same on to us? It just feels like there's a cash grab at the moment. Um, and I think a lot of us are fed up. But I, quite a serious, boring, morbid video, hence why I wanted to be out and about and try and make it a little bit more funky and different. But I, please leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts. If you've not subscribed, please hit subscribe. It really helps me. It helps with YouTube sharing the videos. Hit like. Do all the usual you hear all the other YouTubers saying. And I, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.